Welcome back, listeners. My name is Jordan. This is the Fireside Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Abby. We are super excited to be talking about spiritual gifts today. So, Abby, why don't we just jump right in? Why don't you define spiritual gifts? Yeah, so the definition that I have found is a spiritual gift is an ability that is empowered by the Holy Spirit and used in any ministry of the church. And that definition comes from Wayne Grudem, who is a phenomenal um, theologian. He wrote a book called Systematic Theology. It's one that we've used um, here at our church for many, many years. Um, So a spiritual gift is any ability that is empowered by the Holy Spirit and used in any ministry of the church. All right. Yeah. So why don't we go over like the history of spiritual gifts? Because now we have a definition. We need to know when did spiritual gifts become a thing and where do we get them? You know, let's work through some of this. Let's unpack this yeah. idea of spiritual gifts. So we have a definition. We know what it is. And in that definition talks about the some of the use for it and like where mm-hmm. we use it. So let's unpack it. Let's dive in. So Absolutely. let's go through some backstory. Yeah, because the term spiritual gift, it gets tossed around so often without any definition or like where did they even come from or where they mentioned in the Bible. And um, while the Bible doesn't specifically ever use the term spiritual gift, um, it is something that we talk about and oftentimes kind of glance over. So, Mm -hmm. yes, let's get into this. Let's unpack it. So let's jump back to Acts chapter 1, verses 8. We're talking about the ascension. Jesus has risen from the dead. He's um, appeared to his disciples, and he's getting ready to ascend into heaven. Mm -hmm. He's he's done with his ministry here on earth, and he is empowering um, his disciples to continue the work of the gospel here on earth. So Acts chapter 1, verses 8 says... But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus is talking about, hey, the Holy Spirit is going to come when I'm gone, and he's going to empower you to complete this mission that I have for you, which is um, the mission for all believers, the Christian church. Yeah. Yeah. The Great Commission. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then, um, fast forward to the next chapter, Acts chapter two, we have the Pentecost. So Jesus has ascended into heaven and now the Holy Spirit is coming down upon the disciples. And, um, in verses one through four, it says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there was from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house they were sitting in. And divided tongues as a fire appeared on them and rested in each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So we see the Holy Spirit coming upon believers, God's disciples, and um, filling them. Which, when a believer comes to Christ, we say that the Holy Spirit, you know, is in them. This is this is what we're talking about. This is where we're getting that concept from. So yeah. the Holy Spirit is empowering them. And then actually later in that passage, Peter, who is one of the disciples, preaches a message to thousands of people and many, many of them are saved. So it's kind of the beginning of the Christian church and we're seeing the Holy Spirit, which we just defined spiritual gifts as being used for the ministry of the church. We're seeing the Holy Spirit empower the disciples to share the gospel and the, the beginning of the church happens. So, yeah. 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 So that's super exciting that we get to see that instant in scripture, like here's the fulfilling of the Holy Spirit. We're in, we're going. And then pretty much immediately they begin preaching the gospel. Absolutely. And so, I mean, that's the direct response when we become Christians. That's what we should do, right? We mm-hmm. should, I believe in Jesus. Well, if there's something worth believing in the way we believe in Jesus and what we know to be truth then why aren't we declaring it? So these spiritual gifts would be gifts that help us deliver the gospel? Yeah. Yeah. So let's jump into, we talked about, you brie- we briefly hit on like the how we get them, why we get them. Um, so we get them because we're believers. Mm-hmm. When you accept Jesus, God uses some of the innate skills. We talked about talent in another podcast. He uses mm-hmm. those things to to maybe support this spiritual gift, but what are some of the most common spiritual gifts? So we can kind of have a 
more clear idea of what we're talking about. Right. So the Apostle Paul, um, he talks about spiritual gifts in several of his books, and he gives us a couple of different lists, but he definitely doesn't give us an exhaustive list. He lists a couple here and there throughout his books. And some of them that he talks about is um, like mercy, the gift of mercy, the gift of leadership, the gift of teaching, serving, encouraging, giving, wisdom, discernment, speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues, the gift of prophecy, healing, evangelism, administration, etc. Yeah. Like that's not an exhaustive list, but that's definitely some of the more common ones. But what I appreciate about what Paul does is he gives us pretty broad um, descriptions of what they are. So um, our spiritual gifts serving, that, that can include so many different things that, mm -hmm. you know, so showing up on a Sunday morning serving could look like helping with kids ministry. It could look like helping with the tech. It could look like singing on the stage. It could look like making a cup of coffee. It could look like so many different things based on what the needs are in the church. Yeah. Um, so definitely not an exhaustive list, but um, those are some that when we're talking about spiritual gifts on a Sunday morning or in a small group, you're going to hear those ones pop up. Yeah. I think it's really cool that when you walk into a church on Sunday morning and you see people in these places of leadership, and by leadership, I don't just I'm not just talking about the worship leader, the worship pastor, the the teaching pastor, or any of the associates, but I'm saying like the people that when you walk in the door, the people that say good morning to you, I just think it's so cool the way that they're living in their gifts. Absolutely, they're saying like I'm here to serve, and maybe one of their spiritual gifts is that ability to love mm -hmm. and engage and be hospitable. Well, that's a perfect person to have at the front door because they're ready to engage with you and it's not fake. Right. They are so glad that you're here on Sunday morning. They're so ready to engage with you, meet you where you're at and make sure that when you walk in this building, you know Jesus loves you because of the way that they love you. And I just think that's such a powerful like front door, literally front door representation of spiritual gifts as you see these people as you walk in acting in ways and it's like wow that person just seems so natural at that well that's them embracing their gift it takes time you can't just you don't just like as soon as you become a christian you're a superhero at whatever it is right right and i think we've talked about this before kind of jokingly like when superheroes get their superpowers they aren't just great at that uh, immediately there's a learning curve and we all have those learning curves um so i guess my question is like how do we find our gifts? Yeah, I, I think that's a really great question. And I've, I've been excited to talk about this topic because when we started doing this podcast, like the whole goal in my mind was to start conversations. But for those of, those of you who have maybe not grown up in a Christian home, maybe you haven't been a Christian for very long, but you're coming to church and you're hearing us use phrases that you don't know, and we're not, we don't have the opportunity to define them on a Sunday morning. This is the opportunity we have to define them. So like we talked about tithing, you know, not that long ago. Some people, they don't know what tithing is. Spiritual gifts is another one of those topics where you've probably heard us throw that phrase around and maybe you have no idea what we're talking about. And you have been coming on Sunday mornings, you're, you've decided to follow Jesus and you're wondering, well, okay, what is a spiritual gift and how do I figure out what it is? Maybe I'm a Christian that doesn't get a spiritual gift or whatever. And that is not the case. Every believer, um, the Holy Spirit lives inside them. They have a spiritual gift. And, um, and I think it's as simple as uh, just thinking about what are you passionate about? What do you like to do? What are you good at? Because God's going to give us our gifts within like what he has naturally created us to desire and be good at. So we're going to see our spiritual gifts kind of flowing out of those things. Maybe you're good at, um, uh, maybe you're good with kids. Maybe you're good at explaining complicated concepts in simple ways. Maybe you have a gift of teaching and, you know, you should be hanging out with the kiddos upstairs and teaching them Sunday school. And some people think, well, I, I don't know enough about the Bible to get started. One of the comments that Paul makes in his book is that we serve within our um, our maturity of faith. So that's not, I'm paraphrasing that, but um, 
basically, as you grow as a believer, your spiritual gifts are going to continue to grow in you. So yeah, maybe you've shown up this morning, you just became a Christian, you have the ability to teach, but you're not ready to teach a class quite yet because you still need to learn more about who Jesus is, what the Bible says. That's a very great observation to have of yourself. And um, that ability will continue to grow in you as you grow in Christ. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, does that kind of answer the question? Or what are your thoughts, Jordan? Yeah. Well, one of the things that I've been given wisdom of is if you want to know what your spiritual gifts are, if you're having a hard time going, well, I'm really good at drawing, but what does that have to do? I'm really good at Mm -hmm. singing or playing the guitar. And there's lots of ways you can interact with it on Sunday, but some wisdom that I was given in identifying my spiritual gifts is asking those people around you, Mm -hmm. like, how do you see God using me? And you're not asking it in the sense of like, hey, make me feel good about myself, but you you have to ask people you trust and you can say like, I'm passionate about drawing or playing guitar or whatever. And it's like, well, how do you see God using that? Like, what has God made me for? And these need to be people that are believers but if these people are believers and they know you well, they're going to be very quick to see, to, just to point out things to you. And odds are you probably didn't even see what they were. You might be teaching somebody or have the patience to teach a little kid something fun on the guitar that you had no idea. And you're like, oh, I'm a guitar player. I can be a rock star for Jesus and I'll travel the world in bands. And But in reality, what you missed was the fact that you had the patience and the joy in your heart to sit down with a child and let them play your guitar for a minute and show them something really fun. And really, there's a level of teacher in there that you didn't know. But somebody would see that looking Mm -hmm. at your life and they would point that out to you. And then all of a sudden, you get to get this really cool image of yourself outside of what you think it is. Because it needs to be kind of a picture of what you're doing and how your life is lived as we're developing in Christ. Because we see only so much of what we're doing. Because we think, oh, well, I do that every day. Well, to somebody else, whatever that everyday thing is, might be a totally crazy, weird, new thing that's exciting for them. But So we need people from the outside to help us figure these things out and develop those gifts. Because as a believer, we don't have it all figured out just because we believe in Jesus doesn't mean we have it figured out. And so we need that external influence to help guide us on our journey as we are sanctified in him, becoming more and more like Jesus. And as those gifts begin to develop because we're following him. So that's just some of the insight that I know, like I was given, Mm -hmm. like have somebody from the outside, take a look at your life. And you know, what is that? Like a life inventory, spiritual gifts inventory. There's like tests you can take online yeah, but asking somebody that knows you and knows what your passions are, like I, I think that's a great step to take. And um, another thought that I had while you were while you were talking about that is mm-hmm. um, going back to that definition of what spiritual gifts are. Spiritual gifts are meant for the edification of the church. If you're stepping out in obedience and you're saying, "I'm I'm here to serve," use me. And the your spiritual gift will naturally start to align itself with whatever the church needs are because they're going to be used to edify the church. And so you're going to figure it out. But if you're willing to take that step in faith and saying, I'm here, I'm ready to serve in whatever way possible. Um, you know, let, let the leaders of the church help you kind of figure out what that is. Like like you said, let somebody else help you kind of figure out what that is. But I would, I would think that, if the church needs something and you're there and you're obedient and you're really willing to serve, you're going to find that it's going to, those two things are going to align. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. And I, I think you have to really mix in some humility when we're talking about spiritual gifts. Cause it's really easy to go, well, that's not what I want. Sure. Right. Like, I don't want to be the guy that stacks chairs. Yeah. I don't want to be the person that there's, there's a level of humility you have to approach. And it's, you know, it's the, it's the equivalent of like, Hey, this is a gift from our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ. Like what do you have, but to turn it around and give it back to him. Like he gave it to you. Everything we have is given to us Mm -hmm. by him. So we ought to turn it all back over. But like you're saying, like there's that level of, I need to 
be willing and open, which means humble and ready to, you know, maybe the first week you're at church, they say, hey, could you just after service walk around and pick up any garbage and throw it in the garbage can? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, well, I don't know. That's not really my spiritual gift. No, garbage throwing away is not a spiritual gift. (laughs) But service is. Yeah. And maybe it starts there. But over the next few years, you find your your spot in working with the ushers. And over time, um, you have a really good feel for the room, how the service flows, the ins and outs of things. And you're working with the security team and the leadership team and the staff. And then all of a sudden, you're the head usher who just makes everything on a Sunday morning real smooth. you know, Or you end up moving into like a service producer role because you're amazing with tech, but that service part of it, you see how that works, but then you realize in the midst of that, oh, I have some gifting in leadership because the staff is having me direct people, and oh, and then it's mm-hmm. this building, this compounding interest of development that that's exactly what we're talking about, is that. And as, as we continue to serve in those little things, you maybe you start in the, out in that little role where you're picking up trash, God's going to bless that because you were obedient and you stepped up and you served and you were humble enough to be there. And because of that, God's going to pour out his blessings on that and then continue to bless you as you grow in that spiritual gift. And you, you know, maybe you start serving as what you consider to be a more important role. You know, if you were, if you were faithful and you served willingly in that initial minute role, God's going to bless that. Yeah. Absolutely. So as we go to wrap up and kind of put a put a bow on it, uh, spiritual gifts are super important. They're what helps strengthen the church, gives the church foundation, gives the church its reach, because we're all different, we're all growing, we're all doing our things. Uh, Abby, what... What else did you have that you really thought was important for us to hit on spiritual gifts? Yeah, so kind of the last thing that I wanted to hit on today um, was this idea that everybody is made differently. Everybody's spiritual gifts, they're going to look different. And that's okay. Your spiritual gift is not going to look identical to the person standing next to you on a Sunday morning. Um, Paul talks about, you know, we have been made, every, everybody has been different. There's, you know, the person that is the hand, the foot, the eye of Christ, the church or whatever. We all serve in different roles and we all do important things, even though our roles don't look identical to everybody else's. So I guess the idea in that is it's okay to have a different spiritual gift than somebody else. You were given that uniquely because you interact with different people and um, you've equ- been equipped differently to share the gospel with them in the way that they need to hear it. And, you know, when we go home from church on a Sunday morning, we um, go home to different people. We go to a, a, a job where, um, you know, not... I, I lost that train of thought. Sorry, let me start over again. <laughs> All good. Okay, so the last thing that I kind of wanted to talk about today was that everyone has been made differently. And everybody's spiritual gifts are going to look differently. And that's okay. Your spiritual gift is not going to look the same as the person who's standing next to you on a Sunday morning, their spiritual gift. That's okay. Everybody has been placed in a different uh, job, in a different home environment or whatever. They, you're interacting with different people on a regular basis. And you've been equipped uniquely to share the gospel with them. And that's, that's so awesome to see how the Holy Spirit equips you in exactly the way that you need to be to reach out to those people. So um, you, don't, you don't have to look like the person standing next to you. It's okay. Um, whatever your spiritual gift is, it's awesome. It comes from the Holy Spirit, and um, he has a very unique purpose for it, and that's super cool. Um, and the last thought is if a spiritual gift is truly from the Holy Spirit, it's going to be used to bring God glory, and it's not going to be used as a distraction from the gospel message. Mm. So um, as you interact with other people in there, you know, maybe you're having these conversations. Maybe you go home this week and you talk to people about what their spiritual gifts are. As you're identifying what maybe your guys' spiritual gifts are, it's important to remember that those spiritual gifts, they're not going to detract from the gospel. They're going to be used to edify um, the church and to share the gospel. And I think that's an important distinction to make. <laughs> yeah. Amen. 
Well, I think we've really opened the conversation for people to feel encouraged to explore their spiritual gifts now that they know what they are. They know where they come from, so there's not just this weird thing about them. (laughs) So we've identified some language that church people use. We've talked about uh, what are spiritual gifts. We've kind of given a pretty easy example, a pretty simple example of like, how growing in your gifts and growing in your faith go hand in hand and the development of those sorts of things. And we've talked about how valuable they are to the kingdom. So I think as we conclude this, I just want to invite you, the listener, to send us an email, engage with us. We'd love to hear from you about what's your spiritual gift. How is God using you in his kingdom? We'd love to hear from you. Fireside Podcast at paulsbocc.com. Send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Jordan, as always, here with Abby. This has been the Fireside Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us and hearing us talk about spiritual gifts.